History should be for everyone. Since I created this channel, I've tried to bring different castles, stories and places to people all around the world. However, today this video is slightly different. We're going to look at a castle that isn't accessible, a castle that we cannot legally access, but a castle which is steeped in Tudor history. Recently I visited Brown Sea Island, a rather beautiful island located in Paul Harbour, one of Europe's biggest natural harbours. You have to gain access to the island via boat, but on this incredible place is the castle in question. Brownsea Castle or Branksea Castle as it's known, is a rather different fortification, and is in fact a castle built by Henry VIII, but today is owned by one of Britain's biggest department store companies. Join us today as we look briefly at the bizarre Brownsea Castle. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Firstly, I apologise if the footage from this video is rather similar, as we simply cannot gain access to Brownsea Castle, as it's a private site, owned by the John Lewis Partnership. In the UK, John Lewis are a rather high-end department store that sells various different items, but how can they seemingly own a castle built by the Tudors on an extremely private island? More on this later, but let's delve into Brownsea's history. Henry VIII is known as the most notorious and possibly the most famous King of England. We all know about his love life being a man who married six women, with two of these who met their fate at the end of an axe. He's also known for his brutality with regards to religion and breaking from the Catholic Church. Following the Pope's refusal to grant Henry a divorce, he decided to break from Rome and create his own church, the Church of England, beginning the English Reformation, a period of religious change and turmoil that would go on for decades. Henry's attitude towards the church caused huge tension between England, France, the Holy Roman Empire and Spain. Because of this, Henry feared attack and invasion, and began to improve his defences around the coast with the creation of a number of different artillery forts and castles. He ordered the creation of the devices, artillery fortifications along the most vulnerable parts of the English coastline, these were armed with cannons and manned by guards. Other examples of these on the south coast are Sandsfoot Castle in Weymouth and Portland Castle. One of these device forts was Brownsea Castle. This fortification was built on the southeast corner of the island between 1545 and 1547 to protect the entrance of Paul Harbour. At this time the harbour would have been extremely busy, with ships having visited international countries and would have been stocked with many different goods. The island of Brownsea belonged to the Crown, having previously been confiscated during the dissolution of the monasteries. The castle was a conservative design, being a one-storey blockhouse, being 30 metres wide and being able to support guns on its roof and was divided into three rooms. The blockhouse was initially intended to have been large with two storeys in height, but this didn't happen in the end. The blockhouse was surrounded on the seaward side by a hexagonal gun platform with a moat around three sides and a large 24 foot long drawbridge which allowed access to the southwest side of the castle. The building of the fortification was paid for by the Crown, and also by the local town of Paul, who would garrison the fortification and also pay for its maintenance. Its garrison was rather small, and during Elizabeth I's reign, was staffed usually by six men, and equipped with eight artillery pieces or cannons. Further work in the mid-16th century would be carried out, and the castle would also be equipped with newer and larger cannons. Brownsea would also become more heavily fortified with larger walls being added, which really shows that even following Henry VIII's reign, that the threat of invasion was real. During Elizabeth I's reign, she was under constant threat from abroad, so these improvements were definitely needed, but in 1576, she handed over the castle to Sir Christopher Hatton. Hatton was a rather wealthy and favoured politician and courtier of the Queen, and had also been given the spectacular Corf Castle, as well as being made the Admiral of Purbeck. Hatton would infuriate the locals of Paul, arguing that he had the right to now search and inspect any ship going into the harbour, as well as taking revenue from the local ferries. In 1589, one vessel, the Bountiful Gift, refused Hatton's order to pull in for an inspection, which resulted in the cannons of Brownsea Island's castle firing on the ship, killing two of the crew. The fortification would continue to be garrisoned throughout the 18th century. It was held by Parliament during the Civil War and was re-fortified with more artillery and muskets. The garrison would grow to around 20 men, but following this period the castle would transition into more of a stately home. Different owners would add different features such as a crenellated gatehouse and clock tower in the courtyard or a new great hall. The castle would catch fire on the 27th of January 1896 and was gutted by the blaze. 
Owners after this would maintain an extremely lavish lifestyle, and the castle would be bought by the National Trust, who regarded it to be of little antiquity or architectural interest. Following this, the John Lewis Partnership, a British company who owned the shops John Lewis, would lease the castle to be used as a corporate hotel. They would gradually restore some of the buildings, and today remain the current tenants. Inside, allegedly the wood panelling still remains, as do four cannons, possibly dating back to the 17th or 18th century. What is infuriating about Brownsea Castle, however, is the fact that it's not open to the public to explore and look around. Although the National Trust regarded it as lacking historical interest, it's an incredibly interesting place that in my opinion, has a huge amount of historical significance. It's a remarkable castle that was incredibly important with regards to protecting England from invasion or attack. Say during the Tudor period, the Spanish who were at war with the English had entered Pearl Harbour, then an artillery fort on the island in the harbour would have been an incredibly important feature to help protect the nation. Even the beach outside the castle is unable to access, and that's why filming the castle is incredibly difficult, as the beach is classed as private property. It's such a shame that people who are genuinely interested in history cannot visit, and simply it's used as a holiday retreat, and it'd be amazing to tell the story of the castle from the inside. Brownsea Castle however remains a mysterious fortification. It was a matter of national significance during the Tudor period, following religion ruining international relations between England and other countries. The huge investment in the castle shows that throughout the era, this castle was valued highly, however today this really isn't the case. It's a castle that sits on a remarkably now uninhabited desert island, and there's probably not many of these structures in the world like this that still exist. Its story deserves to be told, and it certainly is a beautiful castle, and its history today still remains hidden away, and desperate to be told. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching.